really excited about the victory tonight. Uh, so happy uh, for our football team and uh, a resilient bunch that has battled each and every week and hasn't come out on top of it uh, as much as we would have liked. But uh, to get this win, to keep that Commonwealth Cup here in Blacksburg, um, to get Bo eligible back-to-back -back years, you know, another sellout crowd. They didn't, they didn't let the weather bother them. It was awesome to see that, uh, see everybody out there. I know we'll travel well. We'll be an attractive choice. Uh, go back bowling, get these extra practices. I really want to, uh, a special shout out to our seniors. Uh, you talk about a group that a lot of these guys went through COVID. Uh, went through a coaching change. Some of them transferred in. Uh, just a lot, ups and downs. And uh, as I mentioned, resilient and close, a great brotherhood. Uh, to come out here tonight and uh, perform the way they did, you know, they stepped up. We had a third-team quarterback leading the charge, and I thought uh, the way the defense, uh, the rest of the guys on offense and the kicking game stepped up, to complement what Pop did tonight. So it was a good night for Hokie Nation. Brent, how early in the week uh, did you know it would be Pop? And uh, what do you think of his performance tonight just in terms of uh, poise and how he handled things out there? Yeah, we didn't know till midweek that uh, we wouldn't have uh, Shalee and uh, – but Pop was getting to work with the ones. And I think that was, that was, uh, you know, it benefited him tonight. Getting all those snaps, being the guy, being able to watch that film. You're talking about a guy that was third team for the majority of the season and spent a lot of practice time watching. And, uh, you know, so to get the reps and, and get some experience throughout the week and have to run the show, uh, it was really good for him. I thought that made a, you know, helped him out tonight. I thought he played well. He made better decisions than last week. Again, back to his preparation. Uh, he made plays with his arm. He made plays with his feet. I thought the line did a nice job protecting him. Uh, he does, he's got a little knack for kind of moving around in there and, and uh, avoiding the rush. But uh, some guys stepped up around him, catching the ball, and you know, certainly Bashaw running the ball. Defense played well. So a um, lot of support. But I was pleased with the way Pop played. Go ahead, Dan. Um, in terms of, you know, this year didn't get off to the start you wanted. You guys had the losing streak. Could you tell in practice this week that this group was, was still locked in, was still uh, had that motivation? Yeah, they really haven't. Uh, you look for signs as a coach, you know, after tough losses and different things. And this group has just proven uh, they're workers. Um, they go out there and, and they enjoy practicing together. Um, you know, so, I, no, I wasn't surprised. I expected it, and I think they did too. We got some, some old guys on this team that, uh, you know, they keep the group pretty straight. Let's go David and then we'll go Damon. Brent, one of the things you critiqued about Pop last week was getting the protection set better. I presume from the lack of – or the – fewer sacks tonight that he did that in a much improved manner. He did. He just made good decisions in general. Uh, they didn't attack the line of scrimmage as much as Duke did, but uh, he, you know, no ill-advised uh, mistakes out there. He, he, was, he was pretty on point. But, uh, you know, clock management and you know, even at the end there, taking a the sack, making them burn a timeout, he, he just – you know, he's got confidence. He's got some savviness about him. He doesn't get flustered. Um, so, I thought he did a nice job. Brent, the, the record's still the same as it was at the, this point last year, but do you feel the program is still trending upwards even with, you know, record being the same? Yeah, without a doubt. No, we're a better team. There's plenty of growth and development. We have so many first and second year players that are making strides. That's why I think this, this bowl prep is going to be really important for a bunch of them. You know, we're going to lose some old guys that have certainly made a lot of plays around here. But uh, we got a good group coming. And uh, we're very competitive in practice against one another. And I think it showed up each and every week. Uh, we're a resilient bunch. 
Uh, very coachable bunch. Uh, they've stuck together. They didn't point fingers. A lot of good signs, a lot of good things that, uh, to me, are important in building a foundation, you know, in a team that can sustain some success and, you know, remain humble and hungry and keep growing and pushing the thing forward. Set our ten, and then we'll go uh, Mike and then Mark. Brent, you guys held them under 100 yards in the first half. What was the secret to the defensive success right off the bat? And then what changed after they had those two touchdown drives that kind of tightened back up? Yeah, I, I thought, uh, first of all, in, to open the game, we had a simple, simple game plan defensively. Wasn't anything fancy about it. Uh, the kids played hard. They executed. We had way fewer mistakes. Um, you know, we had a couple penalties in the second half that contributed and extended the drive. We had the personal foul. They hit us on a good play on the buster route down our sideline. I think they earned that. But, uh, you know, they tightened up. Um, you know, there wasn't any panic. Uh, UVA has, has, has had some good, some good games this year. They've had some good moments offensively especially. And uh, so I thought they tightened up. Uh, there was a few things that uh, you obviously would like back. And then the other piece was the offense answered. You know, we went down the field and kicked the field goal. And, um, you know, that's important. UVA made the switch at quarterback to Musket. Um, did you anticipate that? And, and what challenges did he present running the ball that, that maybe weren't anticipated? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, we, we knew we could see him. He's played some, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I think they like him. You know, and he played pretty well tonight. He's, he's better on his feet than you think. Probably throws a pretty good football, you know. Um, but obviously that's who they thought gave him the best chance to win tonight. Uh, Brent, obviously a big difference between if you had lost this game and your season's over and the fact that you won and now you're going to be going to a bowl game. What does it mean to you that you were able to get this team after a three-game losing streak uh, become bowl eligible? Yeah, I think, you know, it does point to the growth and development, uh, the resiliency. But uh, more than anything, I'm just happy for this group uh, to get this victory tonight. Um, Hard-fought game, um, you know, played well in all three phases, which we need to see. We have to be that kind of team. And then we did it with a third team quarterback that, uh, again, he's one of those first and second year players that I'm excited about. That uh, we got a good group that's got a good future. Uh, to get these reps, you know, in the month of December will be important. We got to make the most of them. Pop's been around for a while, but you mentioned, you know, he's a third team. Do you know until you see it? on the field that he has what it takes to come in and make his first career start in a rivalry game with bowl eligibility on the line? Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, he was that type of player in high school. You know, he was a Gatorade player of the year. Obviously, the competition level was different. But, uh, you know, he never got flustered. He, he found ways to extend plays. He ran it. He threw it. Super confident. Uh, which is a great quality at that position. And uh, you know, so I think we're seeing uh, you know, a more mature version of, of who he was in high school. APR had three sacks tonight. Uh, all ACC podiums coming up tomorrow. I mean, what kind of case do you make for him uh, in the ballot in there and, and perhaps uh, Defensive Player of the Year award? Yeah, you'd have to show me the other couple of guys. Uh, put it paper to paper. You talk about impacting games and doing it all year long uh, against good folks uh, when we need them. Um, you know, there's not a better guy rushing the quarterback in our league, and uh, that's pretty pretty important trait to have on your football team. And uh, it looked like you got Nick Gallo in there for a couple snaps at the end. Uh, we did. What was that like to, to get him out there? Yeah, we just talked about it with him this week. You know, it's a guy that uh, – very proud of Nick, and uh, you know he embodies this just the resiliency. He, you know, he, he decides to come back two years ago and is injured in the last scrimmage before the season starts. Can't play. He decides to come back again this year uh, and re-injures um, and can't play again. So uh, he's out there every single day of practice. He hasn't missed a, missed one. He's a great teammate an ultimate teammate, and uh, 
So we talked about uh, him dressing out and carrying the flag for us and if there was the opportunity to get in the game. And I think he, I think he appreciated and enjoyed it, and I know his teammates did, and I know I did. Two quick ones to finish, Damian and Brown. Uh, Andy brought up APR, but Basial, uh, another 100-yard game, two more touchdowns. Where do you feel he has excelled this year, and do you feel he is up there with the other ACC running backs? In terms I of certainly it? do. Yeah, he's a guy that can, he can make you miss, he can run you over, and he can run away from you. Um, he's proven how tough he is. Uh, we've missed him. You know, he's obviously an impact back. And uh, seeing him out there tonight, you know, we've, we've missed that. I'm very happy for him. Over 100 yards again and you know, scored a touchdown. And it was, it was good to see him out there. Last one, Rob. Coach, you've talked about the importance of coming out strong out of the locker room. You guys stonewall them on the fourth and short and then go bang, bang, bang and score a touchdown, go up 24. I know you guys were already up multiple scores, but just how big was that sequence to kind of keep the momentum going out of the break? Yeah, that was what we talked about at halftime, it, not winning the game, winning the third quarter. Like, let's, uh, let's go out here and win the third quarter, and, and how do we do that? You know, ball security and, and solid tackling and gang tackling and, you know, protecting the sticks, and, and the guys did that. And uh, you know, I think winning that quarter was big. All right, thanks everybody.